Welcome to My Life, Tanya Applied with Rabbi Simon Jacobson, a journey into the deepest teachings of Torah and their application to our personal, emotional, and psychological lives. A good tovach, a good week. We continue our journey in the life-changing Sefer Tanya. This program is made possible by Rena Lights, LLC, and is dedicated in honor and memory of Rabbi Yisav HaLevi Weinberg, Olav HaSholem, Rabbi Moshe Pinchas HaKoyen Katz, Olav HaSholem, Rabbi Yel HaKoyen Khan, Olav HaSholem. It's also in Schus and Merit of Rabbi Zevi Choskel HaKoyen and Risha Katz, Le'edich Yom B'Shanim Tevis, for many long, healthy years. So we are midway through chapter 23 in Tanya, Perech of Gimel, discussing a fascinating topic of how we, individuals in this world, connect with and integrate and fuse with the divine, with godliness. Which is, of course, a feat, because Debus is the beta, the creator, and we're the creation. In every possible way, we're antithetical to one another. Not only is God infinite, he's beyond infinite, and we're finite, we're mortal. And so many other ways that there seems to be no common denominator, except that we're the product of the producer, of the creator. And yet, that's exactly what God wanted. He wanted to create us as an existence. But created an interface, an interface is for us to be able to join together in a full relationship didn't just create us on the receiving end, but we're in a partnership. A partnership. And furthermore, a marriage. We say, That Teirah Mitzvah, it's a marriage. And a marriage is a total union. Like one flesh. The question is how? And this is vital in the whole general theme of, of Tanya. Because the whole Tanya is based on Korav Elecha, Dover Me'ed, Befichel, Bovchel, Asesei. Eichu Korav Me'ed. When we are human beings, Elecha, we, every human being, is limited and defined, and all our, and all, as I mentioned, all the elements that make a, defines a creation. How is Korav Elecha? How is the Ebershter and the Teirah Mitzvahs that he gave us Korav Elecha? That's the whole theme of Tanya. So up to page, to, to chapter till the end of chapter 17, the Alter Rebbe was discussing how we get through that, through Avedah. What I mean by Avedah, it's always through Avedah. I should correct myself. Not through Avedah, but how do we get that? Through our contemplation. Through our work. Through our hard work. Not relying on the fact that we have fundamentally within us an Ashama that is, has an Ava Mesoteris. That begins in chapter 18 and on. How do we get to that? And that takes a serious contemplation. When we understand what godliness is, and we come to appreciate it through our work, it w- awakens within us emotions, and the natural control of the mind over the emotions, the impulsive emotions of the animal soul, allows us to become a benini that has our thought, speech, and action under control and the never shall the kiss, for all practical purposes, is the controlling force in your life. Chapter 18 and 9, he began to discuss the Ava Musateris, that we also have an innate love, which allows us now, even for someone who may not have that capacity, to, so to speak, come to God through their own efforts, also has within them resources. And when push comes to shove in a time of emergency, that connection to God is awakened when they're challenged. But now we're discussing what happens when we're not challenged. So now we're talking about the inherent connection that all of existence and, especially in the Shema senses, that all of existence has to the divine. Hashem Echot. The first two commandments, Anoichi V'la which is Kol Os Kol HaMitzvahs, because everything in existence is an extension of godliness. Now whether we can contemplate on that, which is a big question here, because if you're talking about someone that Misha Daitik Tzorah, like he began in the beginning of chapter, uh, uh, began of chapter twenty, where he said, um, "I 
Actually, I'm sorry, at the beginning of chapter uh, 19. Let me just go to the exact language. Let's find the exact language. <laughs> okay, we're going to edit this. We'll edit this. Because when you're talking about every person, we also know that some people are not capable of through contemplation. Like he said at the beginning of chapter 18, to give birth to love and reverence, or reverence and love. Even which means conceptually that you know that it's appropriate to love God. Even that level he can't reach. So you could argue, as many people have asked me, so one second, but chapters 20 and 21 and further he's talking about something that requires understanding. So firstly, you could say for those people who don't have the, it's not necessarily saying they have to contemplate on that. He's saying that's the, that's the reality that all of the divine is one. And that's why when you have the Ava Mesoteras and you um, do whatever you can to inspire that, that's why it, it'll have the effect of Karve Lech Adover Meid. Because you realize that everything is part of divine unity. For those that have the capacity to contemplate and contemplate even more, obviously, the more you have the power to contemplate. But everybody has some type of understanding that all of existence is part of the divine unity, which is all encompassed in Anechi and Layyilacha, the divine unity and the non duality of Layyilacha, which we'll talk about in the next chapter. So now, when we get back to where we're talk- discussing now, so we're just discussing, so how does a person achieve that unity? Fine. You've explained how the, re- the true reality is that everything is part of God's speech and therefore everything is toffle and completely nullified. And even the very speech itself is completely encompassed within the source of the speech, which is God. And the only reason we feel ourselves as independent reality is because independent consciousness and identity is because of the tzimtzumim, the concealments. So how do we overcome that? So here comes the, the God's divine instruments that he gives us. Kavyochal instruments. Teireh and mitzvahs. So this chapter begins exactly with that. Which is the basis of all the 248 positive mitzvahs. All encompasses one thing, divine unity. And where do we say that, see that divine unity? In Teireh and mitzvahs. Because both Teda and Mitzvahs are united with God as he began chapter 23 saying exactly that. That the rice of a kuchabrichu kulachad. And in the Tikkunim he explains that the Ramach Pikudim, the 248 positive Mitzvahs, in the Ramach Evar the Malka. These are the 248 divine limbs of the king, the divine organs. So he began the first half of chapter 23 explaining, and we discussed this in the previous classes, how mitzvahs are these evadim. They're essentially extensions of and expressions of the divine, like limbs are a direct and seamless extension of the person. And that's why as soon as you want to move your arm, it moves automatically without any particular extra effort. So it's a complete extent. That's what mitzvahs are. So then when a person does a mitzvah, what happens? The dynamics are that, that, that your aver, let's say when you give your, you stretch out your arm to give someone zdaka, you're now becoming an extension of a mitzvah, which is God's arm, which is God's avod and demalka. So your arm is becoming a merkava to the goof of the mitzvah, which is a goof to the neshama of the divine within the mitzvah, the Ratzon within the mitzvah. And the three parts that, come, that work together here is that the Koyach HaMaisa, the Levush HaMaisa, I should say, the lower Levush of action from the divine soul, which is what drives a person to do a mitzvah in the first place, manifests in the Koyach HaChiyunis, in the very power of your arm to move, which in turn manifests in the body of your arm. So all of it becomes an extension and united with the Evar and the Malka, which are the mitzvahs. However, the unity of your arm, the human arm, 
is of a Merkava. The mitzvahs themselves are an extension of God, like the limbs and organs of a body that are an extension of the person. When you align yourself with that, you become a Merkava, a vehicle to that. So it's another step, but it's, but, but it's a vehicle while you're doing the mitzvah to that unity. And that's how he concludes. So he says that... As he says like this, that, that therefore when a person, like he says, the exam, it says uh, when a person, so when a person stretches out their arm to, do a, to, to give zdaka, or other mitzvahs, or legs that are used to walk to do a mitzvah, and the same thing with the mouth and the tongue that speak divrei teira, and the mind that contemplates and thinks about divrei teira yirushemayim. All this now becomes a merkava to what to the varim the malka of the mitzvah, which is the rotsna elyon of Hashem. And then he concludes with the ovis heinei merkava, because they the full blown version of a merkava, which means not just while they're doing a mitzvah all the time, twenty four seven, shakol evrem, and all their limbs and organs. And all their entire preoccupation was their their vehicle was only for the divine will. So that explains mitzvahs. Now he moves to Tater. So even though Tater mitzvahs go into one general category, the, in the, the forces that allow us to interface between our existence, which initially we feel independent because of the tzimtzumim. Even though in truth we're all an extension of the vine, but it's Teda Mitzvahs that allows us to experience that extension, to experience that unity. So now he goes and says, when you break it down, Teda is even a deeper unity than Mitzvahs. So before we learn inside, let's just discuss simple English what he's going to say here. A mitzvah, whether it's a, obviously there are mitzvahs that are not action based. There are mitzvahs be machshava, mitzvahs be, be, be dibur, be mitzvahs be lev, like loving God is a mitzvah. But most mitzvahs are mitzvahs maisis. But regardless, a mitzvah is an action that we're doing that Hashem said, This is the act I want you to do. This is my rotzna elyon. But at the end of the day, it's an expression of God's Ratzon Elyon. It's the implementation of God's Ratzon. When you're talking about Teirah, he's going to explain, is that Teirah itself is the divine will. So for example, if a person gives Dukkah, so why are you giving Dukkah, the, 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 and you're doing the mitzvah, you're fulfilling God's will. It's an expression of what God wants. When you learn in the Torah about Tzedakah, even if you're not doing it, what are you learning? You're learning how, what God is, not just what He wants. To put it in different words, <clears throat> our relationship with God could have been that Hashem said, listen, I created the world, I created a human being, and I want you to serve me. I was created to serve God. But that serving could be like a servant to a master. Like a subject to a, to a leader, to a king. That doesn't mean you necessarily are experiencing and understanding what the master is saying, what the master wants. You're fulfilling what he wants. Like a servant. A servant does not have to understand what the master is saying. He just has to do it. He doesn't have to like it. He doesn't have to feel it. But Hashem said, I'm not just giving you mitzvahs called pure action. I also want you to know me. I'm giving you a teira that teaches you how I think. That teaches you the, the, why the, 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 what's called the methodology behind the mitzvahs. Not only that, that you are part of the process of determining and defining, not the, 230, the 613 mitzvahs were given from Hashem but how we interpret it, how we apply it, when there are different nuances. You're part of the process. 
So it's more than just a servant fulfilling God's will. So mitzvahs maisias, or mitzvahs in general, maisah mitzvahs b'kiyumam, as he said, that is you're performing and aligning yourself with what God wants. Teda leads us into what God is. And there the unity is much more, with, with more than a Merkava. Because a Merkava, a vehicle, what we're asked for, instead of taking your vehicle and driving wherever you want to go, you're aligning your vehicle to what Hashem wants. So your vehicle is doing what Hashem wants. Your legs are taking you to the Dvar Mitzvah, to do a Mitzvah. Your arm to give zdaka. And the whole, your entire body and being is a vehicle to God. But that's a vehicle. Here we're going to go even deeper than becoming a vehicle. You are becoming one with the way God thinks. So for example, when you say, I want to build a building. And you hire com- a contractors. All that is part of what you want. But you can't say that the building of the building, that itself is just in your will. That's how you express your will. That's how you get your will fulfilled. You want to know the will, you have to understand why am I building this home. Or the very statement, I want to have a home. So we're going to learn now inside the difference between Torah and Mitzvahs in this context. So this will add a whole dimension of unity. So in other words, you can do all the Mitzvahs, but when you learn about these Mitzvahs, you're connecting, and not just the Mitzvah Talmud Torah. That he spoke about before. That we use our, like he said, that speaks divrei teda and the mind that contemplates in the words of teda and yirushemayim. That's the mitzvah part. Now we're going to learn what teda does is a completely unique thing. It elevates us to become, because you could again, the Abishta could have just given a, a manual. Here are the things I want you to do, and here are the things I don't want you to do. But he gave us more than that. He gave us a teda. We learn it. We understand it to the best of our ability. So now he says, so let's learn now inside. Ach, hamachshava vahir bedivrei teira. Now, but thinking and contemplating the words of teira, shebemayach, in your mind, in your brain. So he's repeating what he said before, but now he's not talking as a mitzvah, now he's talking about the very experience of learning Torah. And the power, and, the, and using your power of speech to speak divrei Torah, words of Torah, in your mouth. That is now a higher category in the level of unity. Which was more than just the Mache Vorim the Malka. Teda is one with Hashem. The Vorim are an extension, in that sense, they're one. An extension expression. But here it's one with Hashem. And he's going to explain now why. Sheheim Levushim Apnimim shall never shall the kiss. Teda study engages, not just, we talked before, the levush ha'chitzen of a mitzvah, which is action. It engages levushim ha'pnimim, the inner garments of the divine soul, which is dibur and machshava. That's why he brought ha'machshava v'hirus b'divrei teira, v'chein k'eich ha'dibur, machshava and dibur. And it's interesting, before he began with HaPeva Dibur, and then he moved to Meyach. Because there the main focus was the mitzvah of it, the mitzvah of Talmud Teir, of Limit Teir. Here he's talking about the very experience of Teir. So it's engaging what the Levushim Aprim Nefeshal Kis. For Kolsh came, Nefeshal Kis Atzma Melubeshes Bem. And certainly, the divine soul itself, which is manifest and enclosed in these garments. Because remember, the garments are just an expression of the divine soul. So there's two things going on here. Number one, Teda is engaging your higher garments, which are thought and speech, not just your action. 
that already is more connected to you because we know action is more of something you, you do something. It's already doing something, building something outside of you. You give someone's docket. Speech is, yes, relating to another you're speaking, but it's more connected to you. That's why the speech has to always be connected to the one that's speaking. And thought is completely internal. That's the Levushim. Then there's the Levush of the Kis itself, the very soul, your inner divine soul. And Teda, as we're going to learn, has a unique property of unity, even more than Mitzvahs. So Kulam Yechadim Mamash, he says now, these inner garments and the soul itself all unite. They all fuse. They all merge. Mamash, literally, in a complete and seamless union with the divine Berotzen alien, with the divine world. Ve'loymer Kovalevad. Not merely a chariot. Because when it comes to a chariot, as I said, there you are aligning your faculties, your evodim, your limbs and organs, to what God wants. So it becomes a vehicle for that. But when you're engaging with your mind and with your um, and thought and speech and your very divine soul learning teda, you're connecting to the divine will itself. You're becoming one. Because the divine will, the divine supernal will, God's will, is the very, very halacha, the very law, which you're thinking and talking about. So what are you learning when you're learning? You're not just a vehicle carrying out the will of God. You're actually talking about and thinking about the very divine will itself. So let's take a mitzvah. As I said, you do a mitzvah. Mitzvah is zdaka. Mitzvah is zdaka. While you're doing it, you're being a vehicle. But when you're not doing it, you're not. That means because you're an independent entity that has aligned itself. Let's take a mitzvah shazman gram, or mitzvah that's connected at a particular time. We're coming from the Yom Tevim, Sukkot. Took Dalad Min. The mitzvah is that during Sukkot, you take the Dal Minim, the four species, you make a blessing on it. But after Sukkot, or before Sukkot, that same essence exists, and then there's no mitzvah. Or when you're not doing it, you're not doing the mitzvah. So you're fulfilling, you're a vehicle during that so seven days of Yom Tev. You're a vehicle, except Shabbos, of course. You're a vehicle for uh, that mitzvah. When you learn in Teda about the mitzvah of Lekachtam Lechem, or the mitzvah of Zdokeh, you're going into very, the God's will itself. You're becoming one with what God is, is will, wanting. It's not just you're becoming a vehicle. And that's all the time. Not only on Sukkot, not only when you're giving Zdokeh. And that's what creates a deeper union. Because you're actually going in, God has told you how I'm thinking. You're thinking what God is thinking. You're speaking what God is speaking. As he's going to continue to explain. So again, when you're doing mitzvahs, there's you and there's the mitzvah. When you're learning Torah, there's only one thing. Hashem's will. Yes, it's you that's learning it. But when your mind is united with it, that's what all that is experiencing. And he continues to explain. For all the laws of the Torah are specific channels. Through which Primis Aratsnal Yinatsme, through which the inner divine will flows. Shekach Ola but it's saying Yisbarach. Said Altarab is explaining what is Tayra, because that's what arose in 
God's will, that this particular object or entity is permissible, or it's kosher, or it's kosher, or or it's exempt from whatever the issue is, or it's innocent, or the reverse of all these, which would mean it's forbidden, non-kosher, obligated, or guilty. Because that's what Teda is. Teda is mutter, he doesn't bring that negative, he just brings the positive. He just says, The mitzvah is the result of God's will. The result is, here's what you're supposed to do. Or not do. In Teda, this is exactly just to reflect, this is what God wants. And that's what you're learning when you learn Teda. And as such, you're uniting directly with Hashem. Then he continues on. That Teda is not just about mitzvahs, there's more in Teda. So he says, V'chein kol tzirufi eisiyas tanach. And the same. And so too, the entire combination of letters, which is the letters of Teda, of Tanakh, of Teda, of the prophets, Nevi'im, and Ksuvim, the writings, Hein ham shochus retzene v'chachmose. They're channels of the flow of divine will and wisdom. So now it's not just the mitzvahs and the halachas, I should say, the laws, but it's the very letters themselves that you're learning. That are all basically a flow of the divine will. Which is merged in a total union with, a, with God. Total seamless union. So the creation of the world, before we talk about Teda Mitzvah, is God's creation. That's a product. When you do mitzvah, you're aligning that product in like a vehicle, a markova. Teda Mitzvah is coming from a very different direction. There you're getting a snapshot of God's mind. Existence is coming from there, but it's a product. Here you're getting the thing itself. God is saying, I'm placing my, myself a non nafshis obvious into this Teda. So when you're learning it, you're connecting to that, to the God himself part. Now he continues to explain. He says, "Because Shahu Yedei Vuhu Amada is going to say, 'Because my life, Tanya, applied Hashem, with Rabbi Simon Jacobson.' Knower, Please join us again next week. Him. Visit chasidusapply.com for archived classes and more resources." That's what it says. That the meaning that the Zayr that he said in the beginning of the Pedic, that God and Tate are one. But we'll continue to elaborate and discuss this in the next class. Everyone have a good tavoch. Chasidusapply.com. Be well.